Well, good afternoon, everybody, judges. I'm Kevin Grumbach. This is Laura Schmidt. We're the co-directors of Community Engagement and Health Policy Program. Uh, and this is our presentation. Our program's most important accomplishment has been to build trusting, sustainable relationships with community partners to improve the science of translational research. I was really encouraged by the great dialogue and the efforts to build better trust between community-based groups, especially grassroots groups like the Food Guardians in the Baby Hunters Point area, and researchers like some of the top researchers like Bob Lustig from UCSF and others um, that are doing cutting-edge research um, on a worldwide level. But bringing grassroots together with the top researchers is incredible. There's a lot of power there. How to go out and engage the community and truly do effective community consultation and public disclosure was actually something that um, uh, was a big question nationally at all of the Rampart sites. And <clears throat> I think we had a leg up on them, partly because of our FTSE experience and partly because of our community consultation or, or our CTSI community engagement program. There was a uh, physical activity and nutrition summit of uh, major stakeholders throughout the uh, San Francisco uh, to to uh, area where there was common ground to be able to make changes in San Francisco for the betterment of its residents. Uh, that probably couldn't have happened without the uh, ground laying that CTSI did in uh, reaching out to the community. Often the university came into the community uh, looking for research subjects or looking for a place to test a theory or a study of sorts, but that that wasn't always being uh, a mutually beneficial relationship. So that what was happening is that you had service learners or researchers, co researchers come into the nonprofits, do their work, and then leave. And none of that work was coming back to the community in a way that it could be applied for the benefit of the health of their clients. There's a perception that there's a lot of resources that you see that people would like to be able to tap into, mm -hmm. um, and I don't in, in, in a positive way, um, in a collaborative way, and I think it's difficult and challenging for community yeah, members. Yeah, I think of UCSF. I think of a hospital that I attended when I was 18 for a medical procedure. I didn't think of it as a user-friendly campus. Um, it wasn't in any community that I really knew about. The key to success and moving efforts at the community level is trust. And to build trust, you need to work side by side with people over time. And after we um, jostle back and forth, we gain trust both ways. They gain trust in the people, the tremendous people that are, that are represented on the community advisory board, uh, as well as um, us gaining trust for the uh, university. It takes time to build trust um, because of the perception that whether it's historic or based on actual experience, it doesn't even matter. There's a perception that some researcher is going to come in and want us to help recruit patients and then they do study, they find something, and then they use that to you know, pursue the additional funding that never comes back to the community. The recruitment was scheduled to last for 36 months mm -hmm. and it was completed in 19 months. So it was very um, accelerated in the sense that the study was very successful to, uh, uh, to be completed. And out of that came a, um, the faith initiative is what I call it. Um, and it's working with um, the church community in Fort County. And the church is being highly involved in that. Um, the um, the uh, community engagement program pull, helped pull us together to um, begin talking about that in the various churches. So, Dr. Christine Mattson, also her and I wrote to the pediatric doctor for UCSF. We didn't get it. Wrote a grant, but she gained so much more knowledge about what the work, we, the capacity mm -hmm. of the YMCA at Baby Hunters Point, um, the vision that a lot of my staff and that we have about a prevention and health disparities. Mm -hmm. And so she's, I know in her workings now, in her research and whatever she's doing, she's thinking about. How can I support the baby? Why? How can we begin to engage families around childhood obesity? Where we're bringing multiple healthcare systems within a city together 
to work on a single issue that clearly impacts a population differentially. The videographer was our program assistant, but ace uh, videographic uh, master of mine, uh, James Rouse Iniguez. I'd like to, James, stand up, take a bow. All right, great. So, David, you want to start us up? Well, I, uh, I kept waiting for the bears. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like a, a lot of the projects you do are in San Francisco. Does it go out further into the Bay Area? We certainly, for the Community Engagement and Health Policy Program, yeah, it's a much broader reach across the Bay and even across the state or national at the policy level that Laura can talk about. The, we'll talk later about the San Francisco Health Improvement Partnerships, which is really focused on San Francisco. But, uh, for example, the person on the faith-based group, that's an Alameda County organization. So, but we do believe you know, change starts local, right? And so I think a lot of this we want to see change within our own communities and the ones within our immediate reach in the Bay Area, certainly. Yeah, just to, we were told by the NIH reviewers that um, our effort to change the health in, in measurable ways in San Francisco was way overly ambitious. <laughs> so that's where, you know, and, yeah. uh, and, and if we can have a video like this showing tangible changes in health outcomes in five years, we're going to be jumping in, you know, cheering. Um, at the national level, the health policy part of CEHP has been, we have, we found that we were only, uh, one of only two CTSAs nationally that even has a health policy program within it, the other being George Washington University. And over the last um, year or so, we've been funded through supplements to build a national consortium of uh, health policy researchers within the community engagement infrastructure at NCRR. And uh, so what we're doing actually in August, we are having our kickoff meeting. We have representatives from Harvard, from uh, UC San Diego, from all over the country coming to a convening in Washington on August 31st to actually sit down and talk about, well, how could other CTSAs possibly uh, involve health policy as part of their efforts in T2 translation? So we're trying to take what we've learned over the last year or so as we've merged our programs and, 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 and take that model, a lot of it being experimented on in San Francisco, and take it national. I'm wondering about the health policy part of it, because uh, the video sort of focused on the community engagement part of it. So tell me more about um, what you're what you're trying to accomplish with the health policy, and and how is it interfacing with our academic unit in health? Well, well we clearly. were told we could only talk about one of our achievements, okay. so we thought we would <laughs> focus on that. But uh, one of my pet projects within health policy is a program called CELDAC, which has. Uh, linked 80 different uh, data sets, national, state, federal, uh, and made them available with a full panoply of resources for faculty within UCSF so far who want to do um, health policy, health services research. Some of these data sets are extremely expensive, like the Hiccup survey. And we have, uh, we can make these available to say junior faculty who are on a tight shoestring for free. Uh, we have had thousands of hits on the CELDAC website. We've had a lot of um, individual consultations, particularly with um, orthopedic surgery. We've been working one-on-one -on -one doing statistical and programmer-type consultations so that uh, we can build the capacity for, say, a surgical uh, um, a, a surgery researcher to actually do some health services and policy-relevant work. And so uh, we've been recently actually approached by um, a potential funder who would like to just take that um, and, and help us run with it in a, in a bigger, better way. Some is the idea there's some policy research will happen. But, you know, policy, for anything to happen in the community, it requires policy change. Mm -hmm. So I think that's partly the way we think about it, too, that there's a natural connection because whether it's regulatory policy, whether it's incentives at the health plan or health system level, that, that there's a natural affinity 
that these really are part of the arc of translating things into meaningful, sustainable change in the community. You know, one of the one of your um, uh, one of the people in the video said two things that that I that I caught my ear. One was um, her feeling about UCSF, which I which it seems we need to ha have some strategy to try to deal with because I have heard that in my limited forays in the community, I've heard that a lot, especially the African American community, um, and. It's very negative, and it's not getting better. Um, and the, the the second thing she said was, people do their do their research and leave. Um, and it seems like, uh, I guess the question is, how are we going to approach those two things? And I know Kevin, you've well, thought about yeah, it a lot. I, I think it is getting better. I think that's. I mean, you've defined what is one of the major objectives of our program, and you have, you know, Rena Pasek's work at the Cancer Center with Arnold Perkins, who was featured there. It's all, a, it's what we're talking about. There. I mean, I mean, uh, it makes me worried. Does the message not come through? Because it's you have to build sustainable relationships and trust, and it takes those individual one by one linkages to build to change the uh, uh, historical attitudes that's out there about UCSF and most academic health centers. I think, you know, we have our program within CTSI, there's the University Community Partnership Office within the Chancellor's Office, which is trying to deal with service lunar, community development, other programs. It takes, it, it has to be a priority of UCSF. It, it has to be something where there's investment in changing those interactions and culture that's as important as our industry relations, in my opinion. When we put the little thing up on our little metrics, 89 consultations, it, and, and I think the Chris Madsen comments were relevant to this. We go to them, or they come to us, and they and we say, "What's your problem?" You know, well, we want to show outcomes for our program. We want to, you know, get rid of corner stores that are selling alcohol to uh, and violence around in those communities. And we say, "Okay, how can we help you?" Here's the evidence. You want us to show you what wor what programs work? You want us. And that is, uh, from, from in my experience directly, that's a shocker. Wait, you guys want to know what our problem is and help us fix it? That's just like a new way to even approach uh, these community groups. And hopefully over time, if we can sustain that, we will um, build a better public image and, and trust. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about that too later this afternoon. So you back to you. No, I was just thinking, uh, back to some of the earlier presentations and on this one is uh, could you translate, since this is translational, uh, community engagement techniques and knowledge to interprofessional education? I think that's a symposium length question you put out yeah. there, yeah. David, wouldn't you say? Yeah. But uh, yeah. Well, we'll have a symposium. Yeah. But the, I th the answer's got to be yes, right? Yeah, the answer's yes. So, did Sam? Yeah, I, I was going to ask more or less the same question that Talmadge asked, because I remember it was either at this retreat last year or maybe it was the year before on a panel, the same issue of sort of research tourism came up. Um, and uh, just what, what have we done to, to build that into the educational training programs or our curricular uh, for students and residents, et cetera. Have we made conscious efforts to deal with that? Yeah, probably the most fundamental is the health and society pathway. So there is a whole component of community-engaged research and participatory models that Helen Goldstein teaches some of the courses, others of us. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to imbue this in all the educational programs across the schools. Yeah, and I, I also, um, just for the, we've also teamed up with training so we, uh, I think six of our faculty within CEHP are teaching courses in the IDS track on everything from community engagement to the implementation of policy. At, Andy Bindman has a um, class on advocacy, political advocacy. So we're tr hoping to build a new generation of researchers who really get how to do translation, uh, both in, in the community engagement and the health policy fields. Great. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Great, Great video.